Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome back to Inside Arsenal. I hope you are well. I hope you are having a very good start to the week. It is Monday and what a lovely, lovely Monday it is after Arsenal's thumping 6-0 win at West Ham yesterday. It doesn't get much better than that, does it? Now, I'm a little bit tired this morning. Tried to stay up to watch the Super Bowl last night. Got about half time, just before half time. I think it was the last thing I remembered. And then I woke up about 6.30 in the morning. Well, actually, my son woke me up about 6.30 in the morning. We're coming downstairs to find me asleep on the sofa this morning. So a little bit tired. This is about the fifth attempt I've made at starting this video. All gone pear-shaped so far. So I'm hoping this one actually goes a little better and I get through without having to restart it once again. So apologies if I'm sort of stumble my way through this one. But yeah, I, uh, I'm feeling the effects of it a little bit this morning. But anyway, it doesn't really matter because I'm in a good mood and we should all be in a very good mood because that was such a fantastic win yesterday at West Ham. Thoroughly enjoyable it was sitting there watching it all unfold, watching streams and streams of West Ham fans marching past me down the stairs <laughs> and out of the stadium. Uh, yeah, it was very, very funny, I have to admit. Um, most of them took it pretty well, especially when Declan Rice thumped one in from 30 yards to make it 6-0 to rub salt into the wounds. Um, the ones who were still in the stadium at that point uh, actually just started laughing to themselves. I think they just realised, it was like, my God, this is one of those days that we just need to try and forget. I mean, Arsenal were brilliant. West Ham were terrible. They really were terrible. I it's hard when you when you see a game like that and you watch a game like that and you can try and analyze it. You just think, you know, were, were Arsenal just brilliant or West Ham just terrible? And it's sometimes it's difficult to sort of make sort of make up your mind over it. I do think Arsenal were very very good. Their movement was brilliant, and we'll talk about it um, throughout the show. And I did, you know, they were very very good going forward. The movement of Havertz. Odegaard and Trossard. It was really interesting to watch. And West Ham just simply couldn't coach for it, couldn't cope with it. I think West Ham could have done much, much better though. And they just it was it was on it, it was like a training game at times. It was really odd to see a Premier League team basically seemingly down tools, which that's what it felt like from watching it from a distance. And you are from a distance up in London Stadium. The press box is miles away. And the game always feels really slow. I don't like watching football at London Stadium. It always feels really slow because of, you're just so far away from the pitch. Um, but just kind of watching it yesterday, it had pre-season friendly against lower league opposition kind of written all over it. It was that the difference between the two teams was that stark. And so it was hard to work out whether that was because Arsenal were just so good or West Ham were just so, so off it. Um, but I think you just got to pay credit to Arsenal, really, and the way that they played and the movement that they had and the the ability of all of the players just to make a difference when they needed to. And it was an interesting... And the way the game started, I thought Arsenal played well for the first 10 minutes. And then it looked like West Ham were beginning to settle into the game a little bit. They had a couple of attacks. You could see they tried to target Kivior at left back a little bit. Um, and I was watching it thinking, oh, they're getting on top. There was just a couple of moments when they pressed pretty high and the crowd got up and you thought, oh, this could be... A bit of trouble for Arsenal here, but then Arsenal just seized control of the game around the sort of 20, 25 minute mark. And by the time they eventually scored through Saliba's header, you felt it was coming. They've gone close a couple, a couple of times. Trossard had put a header over. There was another chance, I can't remember which one it was. And then Saliba scored. Then Saka missed a good chance when he headed wide. He then flicked that shot wide when he sort of lifted it over the keeper. And it was just like a wave after wave of Arsenal attack. You know, West Ham just. They just crumbled. They really, really did. They had no way of stopping Arsenal's movement in that midfield. Now, there's kind of three tens that they played in, in Havertz, Odegaard and um, Trossard. Which, and that's kind of how they were playing. They were rotating. It was really hard. Obviously, you looked at it and thought Trossard's playing as the false nine here. But then watching it as the game unfolded, you know, Trossard would be deep. Havertz would be at nine. Um, then Havertz would be out wide. Trossard would be in another position. It was, they were so fluid. The movement between the three was so good that West Ham just couldn't cope and just pulled them apart and that allowed Arsenal to just to just pick them off and you know two of the goals came from set pieces and again and um we've talked about set pieces a lot and you know I, I spoke about it after I can't remember which game it was it was this, it was the Crystal Palace game wasn't it when Arsenal scored a couple of set pieces in that game and everyone seemed to look down on set pieces at that point they're like oh Arsenal are only scoring set pieces and I talked about how important they were and how they changed games and um, you know, when you come up against a team who's not going to give you much space, you're going to drop pretty deep. If you can score from a set piece and use your 
ability from set pieces to break them down, then the game state changes and you just suddenly find a lot more space. And that's what happened with Arsenal yesterday. It was a brilliant ball from Declan Lice, the first one um, for the corner that Saliba headed in. There'd been warning signs in a couple of set pieces before that. And then he headed in. Obviously, it was another brilliant ball that set up Gabriel for the third goal. Sacra scored the penalty in between the two. Uh, which I thought was really good to see Saka take that after what happened last season at that stadium, albeit at the other other end, it must have been going through his head. As I said in my ratings video yesterday, it was certainly going through my head as I was waiting for him to to take it. Mikel said afterwards that he wasn't sure. He didn't know if he was sure if he was going to take it. I, my, uh, Arteta kind of leaves it up to the players on the pitch to decide who's taking a penalty. And we've seen before this season, it kind of changes um, depending on where Arsenal are playing. Normally, Odegaard's taken them away from home this season and Saka's taken them at home. But Saka wanted this one. Whether that was to try and exercise the demons of last season, I don't know. But he took it really well. And then obviously, the Gabriel had made it 3-0 and Trossard made it 4. And, um, it, was, it was just a... It was just a mad 20-minute spell where, like I said, West Ham just collapsed in remarkable fashion and Arsenal just showed their class. And it was really, really fun to watch. Certainly wasn't fun for the um, uh, for the West Ham fans to watch as they went marching past me. Uh, obviously, the two goals in, in the second half kind of rubbed salt into the wound. Saka with a fifth and then Declan Rice with that fantastic goal to make it 6-0. Mikel was delighted after the game and he spoke a lot. And Arsenal have done this a lot. They've used motivation from last season a few times. We saw it. Um, uh, we've seen it before with Arsenal when they've really gone up there. It was last season, that that game in Newcastle when they won 2-0 at the end of last season. They'd used the motivation from the season before where they've missed out on the Champions League. And Mikel spoke about it after the game. They've done it a few times. And he, he said they what happened at West Ham last season, the 2-2 draw, the two defeats they've suffered against them already this season, that was in their minds going into this game. And they really used it to motivate them to go on and get the win that they needed. And Mikel said it after the game, he said, look, it was time to beat West Ham. We all knew it. We all had it in our tummies and we knew that it was going to be a really tough match. And we had to do certain things better, especially in both boxes and in the previous match. We certainly did that today. He was talking about how ruthless Arsenal were. He said, that's what we want to learn, that we want to be better every single week and that we are not satisfied. After the Liverpool game, we have to show now that we have the capacity to replicate that level or be better. And that's the way the bit, the boys trained all week. I think that was really important. I spoke about it in the build-up to this game. You know, Liverpool was fantastic last weekend, absolutely fantastic, but it was gone. The absolutely crucial thing for Arsenal was to back it up because the worst thing that could happen was to undo all the hard work that they did against Liverpool and throw it away against West Ham. So I think it was, it was really, really important that they went and got the result yesterday. But and, and fantastic they did. I never expected them to do it in the start they did. Mikel was asked if it was a statement victory and he said yes. Obviously, and it was. It was a huge statement. I said last week the Liverpool game was a statement, but this game was almost a bigger statement. Arsenal were going last. They'd seen Liverpool had won. They'd seen Man City had won. They'd seen Tottenham had won. All eyes were on them. How could they respond? Would they back up that Liverpool game? You know, the pressure was on yesterday. It absolutely was on. And the way they just brushed that all aside and produced the performance that they did and scored the goals that they did, it was a huge statement that, you know, Arsenal are absolutely still in this title race and they mean business. You know, lots of people started to write them off over those, those that little run of results around the Christmas um, period. But they've come back from Dubai. In those, in those games since Dubai, I think they've scored, what is it, five against Crystal Palace, two against Forest, three against Liverpool, and now six against West Ham. And they've only conceded two in those four games. I mean, it's a huge statement. Absolutely. So Mikel said, yes, obviously, we are maintaining and building some momentum now. And the performances have been really strong, as well as the results in recent weeks. We need to maintain that because the other teams are doing it as well. We are not the only ones and we need to recognise that. Now, on to Burnley. He was asked if he feels like the players uh, are pushing their standards every week. And he said, yes, because we know the standards and the level that we are facing. We need to be at this level if we want to have any chance to be successful. And he's right. Man City have won 10 games in a row now in all comps. They're in one of those. They're in that Manchester City type run. Who knows how long it's going to go on for? Who knows if they... If it will end, normally it doesn't. They just go on this run through to the end of the season. So if Arsenal know, if they want to keep up the pace, they want to chase City down this season, they are going to have to do exactly the same thing. And that's what they're doing at the moment. And they've got to continue, as Mikel said, on to Burnley on Sunday. I just wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about Martin Odegaard now. Um, he was so good yesterday. It was that sort of game he got a lot of space and when you give Martin Odegaard space he will just rip anyone apart and I think a lot of people underestimate Martin Odegaard and and I think he's still which is a mad thing to say but I do think he's underrated still um he's been very unlucky this he, he could easily be sitting on 
12, 13, 14 assists this season. It's not his fault that the chances haven't been put away because he has created so, so many. And it was good to see him get a couple of assists yesterday that peak players actually took the chances that he created for them. Because I feel like he's been really hard done by numbers-wise, stats-wise this season, such as the level that he's been playing at and such as the creativity that he's producing. I mean, look at this from Squawk of the Stat yesterday. Martin Odegaard is now the first player to create 50-plus chances from open play in Europe's top seven leagues this season. It's an unbelievable stat. And also here from Opta, Next to it, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. Odegaard is now the first player on record since 2003-2004, that's when records began, to complete 100-plus passes, that's 107, create at least five chances, seven, and assist multiple goals, two, in the same Premier League match. That is the level that he hit yesterday. And that stat on the left there, the 50-plus chances from open play this season, that is the level he's been oper operating at this season. You know, football, I, I get the way football works now and people look at numbers and that's it. If you know, if you don't score, and Kai Havertz has talked about this when people have been criticising him this season. That if you don't, if they look at the name and it doesn't say goal or assist next to you, then it means you've had a poor game, which is obviously complete and utter rubbish. Um, but I, And Odegaard could easily have been sitting on 14, 15 assists this season. He's been playing that well and he was just a joy to watch yesterday. West Ham couldn't lay a glove on him. He was that good. It was just, he's, he's just world class. You know, Arsenal got some world class players in this team, no doubt about it. Declan Rice is definitely one. We saw that yesterday. But Martin Odegaard is absolutely another. And I do think people do underestimate and do underappreciate a little bit just how good Martin Odegaard is. I thought it was absolutely fantastic yesterday. And I thought him in that trio of tens almost, and that's how they played, as I said earlier on in the show Havertz, Trossard, Odegaard. It was really interesting just to watch them from a distance and as much as I say I dislike watching football at London Stadium and I do it does give you the opportunity to almost watch from a sort of um a bird's eye view and you can see all of the pitch and see the players moving and just watching the three of them just go and you know one minute I had a got Odegaard to be the furthest forward then he'd be dropping back you know almost picking the ball up off the center backs you'd have Kai Havertz playing as a central striker then Havertz would be over on the left you'd have Trossard as a central striker that they were just roaming around albeit they were given a lot of space by West Ham to work in. But the three of them just worked and dovetailed so nicely together and they were so crucial to Arsenal being able to dominate in the way they did yesterday. They all played fantastically. Like I gave Kai Havertz a seven in my ratings. I've had lots of complaints about my ratings, again, that it's too low. It's like, how can you not give Rice and Odegaard a 10 out of 10? I, maybe I'm a bit harsh in my ratings, but I think 10 out of 10 has to be a genuine, you know, I don't know, just an out of world type performance in my mind to get a 10 out of 10. Maybe I'm just too harsh on them. And James Benjamin was saying to me that I am too harsh on them. You know, nine is a truly exceptional performance for me. Seven is a really top, good, a top, it's a good performance. Seven out of 10 for me is a good performance. Eight is, you know, exceptional. Nine is unreal. And 10 is just faultless out of this world. Um, but I gave Habit seven yesterday and Maybe, maybe he could have been an eight, certainly by a lot of what you've been saying. A lot of you guys see him as an eight. And I thought he was brilliant. I thought his movement was great. He was involved all the time. He caused West Ham's all sorts of problems throughout. Trossard, Trossard's 20 minute spell leading up to half time when Arsenal scored those four goals. He was just unplayable at that point. He was pulling West Ham all over the place. His pass for Saka for the penalty was fantastic. The bit of play he did down the left hand side to win the free kick for Gabriel's goal was just brilliant. And his goal was fantastic as well. What a finish that was from Trossard. He was unplayable for those 20 minutes. Uh, and Odegaard, as I said, was just brilliant throughout. And it was just really interesting seeing the three of those and how fluid Arsenal were. Um, and the movement. And, you know, at times you said Arsenal this season, you looked at them and thought they've just been a little bit too static, a little too easy to play against and defend against, but they weren't yesterday. And it was because of those three, I think, and the movement that they did. And that created so much space for likes of Saka and Martinelli either side of them as well, because the West Ham defenders were just totally bamboozled throughout. So I think they deserve a lot of credit. And you guys have been getting in touch uh, Ramesh says, Ramesh from Jamaica. Hi, Ramesh. Hope you're well. Says, today, Odegaard, Leo and Kai really impressed me. Maybe we should start giving Kai his flowers. He causes so much chaos and opens up space for other players. Thoughts? 100%, as I just said. I thought he was really, really good yesterday. I think he's been really good recently. Fantastic against Liverpool. And uh, I thought he had an excellent game yesterday. Uh, Jas Swemp says, Kai Havertz, his role in the team is immense. He didn't score or assist, but the way he contributes to the team by giving control is so underrated. Clearly can see why Arteta wanted him. Gavin said, need to give Havertz more respect. His positioning was exceptional. 
never gave the ball away and won everything in the air, created a lot of space for others to play. And he did. He was great. He really was. He did everything Mikel Arteta would have wanted from him. And just because he didn't score, get an assist, that doesn't mean he didn't contribute at all because he contributed big time in that win yesterday. And you look at a lot of the goals um, as well. And just the, the work Havertz does on the ball and off the ball as well, it just creates a lot of space for his teammates. And they really appreciate him. And I think Arsenal slowly but surely uh, are beginning to really appreciate him and to understand how he works. Just quickly on to Bagaya Saka. He got man of the match after the game. Um, I think Arsenal's man of the match. The fans voted Declan Rice man of the match, but Saka got the Sky man of the match after the game. 51 goals now for Bukayo Saka. His, his penalty made it 50, and then he got the 51st in the um, second half. He, he's got 49 assists now for Arsenal. That's 100 goal contributions already. Still just 22. His, he's now the Arsenal's youngest player to score 50 goals in the Premier League, and he's Arsenal's youngest player to score 50 goals um, in, you know, before the Premier League era, since Frank Stapleton did it back in uh, late 70s, I think it was. Um, just unbelievable. The numbers that he produces, the quality he produces. You know, a lot of people have looked at Saka this season and said he's, he's having a pretty poor season. But then you look at the numbers again. You know, he's he's having a fantastic season numbers-wise. And um, we're still only in, in February. So, I just, I, again, he, when I talk about sort of being underappreciated and maybe taking for granted some players... I think sometimes we do take Bukayo Saka for granted in terms of what he does, how young he is, what he's produced in during you know his teenage years and now his early 20s and what he could go on to produce if he stays at Arsenal for a long, long time, which, fingers crossed, I really do. It's great to see him score the penalty. Like I said, I thought he showed real sort of balls there to take, to take that after what happened last season. I loved his second goal, how he took it, giving the keeper the eyes, whipping it in. And um, he's on a really good run of form now, Saka, since Dubai. Uh, and uh, long may that continue because when Saka plays well, we know that Arsenal play well. Nice to see Ethan Wanieri involved. He got a run out yesterday. Some really nice touches in that uh, sort of cameo he produced. Um, Mikel saying there is something that you have to do in your team, and that is that is the trust of your teammate. Basically, that is earn the trust of your teammates. And I had two things. One, the players on the bench whispering to me to bring Ethan on, which is great to hear. And the other one, your teammates want to give you the ball all the time. If they do that, it's because they really trust you. And you can only have to see how many times he was involved. So it was a great sign. So saying, you know, the players really trust Ethan Wanieri. And they did. They gave him the ball a lot. He got on the ball a fair amount. There was that lovely little moment where Odegaard, Kind of basically just rolled the ball, rolled his foot over the ball and just rolled it to Anieri. And it was, uh, I saw Sandine over at the Telegraph did a nice tweet on it. And it and it was just like, he was basically saying, here, mate, go and do what you can do. Show us what you can do. And that was because the players do trust him when you're, he's still 16. Unbelievably, 16 years old. And he's playing for Arsenal. It was his second Premier League appearance. You know, a lot of people have been saying, we want to see more of Anieri. We want to see more of Anieri, which I can understand because he's a talent and you want to see these players. But he's 16 years old. What, what we, can you imagine what you were doing at 16? And he's playing for the Arsenal first team and has made two Premier League appearances. It's remarkable. It is genuinely remarkable. And so I think that's, again, we need to just be careful with Wanieri, what we demand from him, what we demand from Mikel Arteta as well in terms of how much he plays him. Because he's a 16-year-old kid. He's not even signed his professional contract yet. He can't. He's not old enough, which is just remarkable. It really, really is. But it was good to see him involved. And he looked at home. And that's the best compliment you can probably give Ethan uh, when he came onto that pitch. He wanted the ball. He wanted to be involved. His teammates wanted him to be involved. And you know, he did not look out of place at all, physically or talent-wise. And that was, a, that was a really big thing. So that was great to see. Okay, so on to my player ratings. Now, I did do my video from the game yesterday, um, talking about these much more in depth. If you haven't seen it yet and you want to watch it, then go down. I'll rattle through them now. Um, and then I'll respond to some of your criticism on them. So I gave Raya a seven. Again, for me, seven is a very good mark. It means you've had a very good game if you have a seven. So I, I almost feel like I'm the Lekeep of player ratings. Lekeep notoriously uh, give out very tough player ratings. And even if a player plays, you know, scores a hat trick, he'll get like a seven out of ten. Um, but I gave Raya a seven. White, Saliba, Gabriel all got eights. Kivio got seven. Rice got a nine. Odegaard, nine. Havert, seven. Martinelli, eight. Saka, nine. Trossard eight. See, I think the one I was probably the most hard. I, I I think Havertz could have easily got an eight, especially if Martinelli gets an eight. Maybe the more I'm looking at that now and thinking about it, maybe he's the one that I'm I can maybe accept if you guys are having a go at me for it. So that that's one. But you kind of look at it what 
that Calvin says, what does a player have to do to get a 10? Both centre-backs scored a goal, a clean sheet, no mistakes. Rice, two assists and a brilliant goal. These are 10 out of 10 performances. Um, next one, Low, no Charles, the two centre-backs have to get nine out of 10 for scoring and keeping a clean sheet. And then C CB's nine, full-backs eight. The defensive line was incredible today. And look, I get, I do get it. I get it. Maybe I am harsh on them. But as I said, I think also the fact that I think West Ham was so miserably awful yesterday. Um, you know, when I'm looking at those centre backs, they didn't even have to break sweat. It wasn't they were under pressure or anything like that. Yeah, I know they scored from set pieces, which was great. They kept a clean sheet, but it wasn't. I think asked. I think I were, might well have been able to keep a clean sheet if I was at centre back in that team yesterday. <laughs> West Ham was so poor and offered such little threat. Um, you know, Gabriel and Saliba. I've seen them play miles better than that this season because they've had to play miles better than that. And you can only play what's in front of you, I suppose. And from that point of view, they were great and they they controlled the game. They didn't give West Ham a sniff, so maybe they could have be, been a nine, but I think eight is perfectly fair for those two. Like I said, when I go back to those ratings, I think maybe Havertz is the one which I've been a little bit harsh on there. He could have got an eight, but I think again, seven is a very good score in my mind. Seven, you've played very well to get a seven out of ten. Um, uh, but yeah, may, maybe Havertz the, the one, but elsewhere, you know, Odegaard, Saka, and Rice for me, the standout performances. I don't think they're, I don't, I don't, be, I it takes a lot for me to give a 10 out of 10 yeah you have to literally yeah i can't really remember how many 10 out of 10s i've given not many but um i think nine for me shows that is an exceptional performance so uh but yeah i know a lot of people get annoyed with my player ratings moving on to some of your other questions and comments thank you once again for all you guys getting involved in it steve wilson says fantastic to play a fantastic display with several of the lads out injured this makes it even sweeter yeah that was really good i thought when you looked at that team when it was announced and also you certainly looked at the bench you're like uh oh lots of players missing here huge amounts of players out you know potential game changers out as well how are Arsenal going to cope with that well they cope very very well and that's uh that was great um oh dear I've repeated the same uh the same comment there twice uh which is a bit annoying sorry uh but you am AAMZ112 said, I feel like Trossard is undroppable now after his performance. I also thought Wanieri was our best sub. Some brave passes and he looks so comfortable on a ball. Our next five league games are crucial before we go to, away to City. All very winnable, but we need to be at our best like being in the last two games and not let our dro levels drop 100%. So, so, so important that Arsenal just get on this winning run now. Just keep winning. Keep getting three points. Keep plucking away before they go to the Etihad. If they can do that, it'd be fantastic. It's annoying that I've replicated that comment twice because there was another comment that I'd I'd uh, selected to go in this so that's that's annoying but it was again it was I think it was another one that was about Trossard and talking about his performance because he was very very good and you know is he undroppable I don't know I think when he plays in that false nine role he's excellent and I've always it's my favorite role for Trossard kind of like how it's my favorite role for Havertz as well um uh, when I saw that team sheet and it first came out and I heard that Trossard was playing, I was like, oh no, he's playing Trossard at left eight. I never liked that. But the, but when I saw him lining up in the warm-ups playing as the nine, I was quite happy. But as I said, they all rotated so much, the three of them, that no one even, it never felt like anyone was playing in a fixed position. And maybe that's the way forward for Arsenal. Um, it'll certainly make them less predictable. Um, a couple of comments for some Ben White love, which I, I thought was uh, I wanted to include because I thought Ben White played really well yesterday. And he's played so well since he's come back for Dubai. I love this top comment from Mr. Slings. He says, Ben White's superpower is measured by his tan level. The break in Dubai has allowed him to top up his tan and he's playing much better now. I hadn't thought of that. Maybe that is maybe that is the secret. Make sure that Ben White's tan stays as as, uh, as strong as possible throughout between now and the end of the season. And we're going to see Ben White as... But, uh, replicated last season's form throughout. Um, Magoo says, Ben White won't get any headlines, but his form has been a major factor in us being more fluid and it's really helping Saka and Odegaard down that right-hand side again. 100% is. The three of those, they were so crucial to Arsenal's season last season, so integral to how they played. It was Arsenal's strongest sort of partnership and combination play and it, on the whole pitch last season, that right-hand side. And it has dropped off a little bit this season. The three of them aren't combining as much as they were, but they've certainly, since Dubai, have all found their form again and they're all contributing and they're all the fact that they're all playing well I think is just rubbing off on each other and and it's just you know it's been absolutely crucial to Arsenal playing very very well again so great to see well done Ben White appreciate that um comment as well from you guys so thanks for getting involved as always okay that's it from me everyone thank you very much for your time appreciate it wherever you've been watching or listening to this around the world have a very good end to your monday enjoy the game watch the highlights again i'm going to definitely at some point uh and uh yeah i'll speak to you again tomorrow until then bye bye.